In poetry, every word carries weight. This year's finalists for the National Book Award for Poetry examine histories of state-sanctioned violence against people, animals, and the environment. They contemplate intergenerational loss and erasure and depict the many stages of love, lust, and aging. Through reflection and reckoning, poetry reminds us how to make sense of the present and how to hope for a better future. The panel chair for this year's National Book Award for Poetry is Kwame Dawes, the author of 22 books of poetry and numerous other books of fiction, criticism, and essays. He is a George W. Holmes University professor at the University of Nebraska and a chancellor of the Academy of American Poets. I'm in blood stepped in so far that should I wait no more, returning where as tedious as going over. It's not a bloody game, so don't worry about it. Um, it's a great pleasure uh, to be representing uh, on behalf of the four brilliant, accomplished, sensitive, and informed poets that served with me in selecting the winner of this year's National Book Award for Poetry. January O'Neill, Keith Go, that's good. <laughs> Keith Quippers, <laughs> Maider Vang, <laughs> and Juan Felipe Herrera. who unfortunately was not able to make it, but his spirit was definitely with us today. We diligently read through and thought about and spoke about and meditated over a few hundred books of poetry to bring us to tonight's announcement. So I want to take a moment to thank them profusely for their kindness, generous spirits, as they carried out this great service to American poetry. So first, I want to say I congratulate the long list and all the other people who had books submitted, and they impressed us greatly. The finalists for the 2022 National Book Award for Poetry are Alison Adele Hedgecock, And that's for her book, Look at this Blue Coffee House Press, are the publishers. John Keane. For his book, Punk's New and Selected Poems, published by The Song Cave. Sharon Olds. For her collection, Ballads, published by Alfred A. Knopf and Penguin Random House. And Roger Reeves. <laughs> For his book, Best Barbarian, published by W. W. Norton and Company. And Jenny G. for her book, The Ruptured Tents, published by Grey Wolf Press. The winner of the 73rd National Book Award for Poetry is John Keane.
I mean, I'm actually crying. I'm, I'm in shock. <laughs> um, so I, I put together some, some notes because I said in the improbable uh, instance that I actually received this award, all the words, I work with words, right, would fly right out of my head. So um, I want to begin by thanking the uh, National Book Foundation and the amazing uh, jury, I mean, the judges, uh, all of my fellow uh, long listers and short listers. They are all amazing poets, and all the poets who submitted work this year, they all deserve a round of applause. I'm going to offer some thanks. I want to thank, begin by thanking also my partner, Curtis Allen, who's here, who has been with me on this entire journey. I love you. Many thanks to my parents, particularly my mother, who encouraged me as a reader, a writer, and a creative person. Many thanks to my publisher, The Song Cave, and my editors, Alan Felsenthal and Ben Estes, who took a leap with this collection. It took me many, many years to get this book into print, and uh, I think I was doing a reading in Brooklyn, and Alan was there, and he said, uh, can I see the book? And I said, I don't have, just have a book. I have just a little chat book. And he said, send me the manuscript, and the rest is history. Uh, thanks also to my agent, Jonas Strauss. And let me thank the Alvin Balchup Trust, which allowed us to use one of his stunning photographs on the cover. Many people comment on the cover of this book and have picked it up just because of the cover. So thank you, Alvin Balchup. Thanks also to the late Cynthia Gray, Cindy Lore, and her parents for allowing our collaborations to appear in this book. It was very important to me that this book include these collaborations. I felt like they were a vital part of my portrait uh, making experience, so I'm glad that Cindy's voice is in here too. Many thanks to my brilliant students at, and colleagues at Rutgers University of Newark, which is one of the best places to work. A million thanks to the Dark Room Collective, who was my first uh, literary family, and to the amazing Kaveh Khanum. And uh, many thanks to all of my dear friends out there, everywhere, uh, for their love, their critical guidance, their wisdom, and support. I want to dedicate this award to all the readers out there, and to my ancestors on whose shoulders I stand, ancestors by lineage and association, including the several generations of writers, particularly the black, gay, queer, and trans writers. <laughs> especially those whom we lost to HIV AIDS in the 1980s and 1990s. I had the pleasure of hearing and meeting some of these writers, and let me just say they were brilliant, they were fierce, they were original, they were daring, they were courageous, and their voices not only captured the world they were living in, but envisioned a better one. Let's return to their words and the words of so many vital writers and artists we may have forgotten. Lastly, I urge you to support libraries and librarians. You've heard many comments along those lines. Support workers in the publishing industry and every industry. Support writers who speak up and face political censure and oppression. Support the people fighting for a more equitable and equal, fair, less brutal, less violent, less cruel country and globe. <laughs> Support those fighting for social, political, and economic justice. And yes, I'm going to say it. Yes, we need people who are fighting for social, political, and economic justice. <laughs> 
support the people fighting to address climate change and its devastating effects on our planet. It's causing crises all over the globe. And sometimes it's easy to look away and, you know, unless it direct, directly affects us. But please support people fighting to address climate change and support those who are fighting for our common future. Never forget the role in, as we do that, the literature plays in this struggle. And I'm going to end with two lines by Robert Hayden, one of my favorite poets. What did I know? What did I know? of love's austere and lonely offices. Thank you.